name is uh, uh, Roel. So I'm going to uh, discuss about Drupal 8 module development. So yeah, uh, I'm an open source advocate uh, from Philippines. And I'm doing Drupal since uh, 2013 and active volunteer in uh, Drupal Filipinas. So yeah, I'm customer success engineer in uh, Panchon. So before I, I begin uh, working on them, uh, I was a back-end Drupal developer. And yeah. So uh, my topic for today is about uh, Drupal, Drupal 8 coding standards. So. Uh, some are uh, in Drupal 8. Some are added new new coding standards are added. So uh, as we know that uh, Drupal 8 is uh, using a uh, Symfony and it's uh, already uh, object oriented programming. So uh, Drupal 8 file structure. What are the new structure of uh, Drupal 8? So yeah. And then Drupal 8 API overview. So I'm going, I'm going to just uh, pick some of the most used API that uh, I'm going to use later on uh, creating our first module. Then uh, PHP namespace. So uh, if you're not familiar yet in uh, PHP namespace, uh, I'm going to discuss what's uh, uh, namespace in Drupal 8. And then uh, routes and controller. So uh, routes and controllers uh, also new in Drupal 8. So since uh, it's using uh, Symfony. Uh, then the last is uh, creating a custom block and form. So uh, we will uh, create a custom block and form. So Drupal 8 coding standard. So uh, just an overview for the new for Drupal 8. So I just said it earlier, object-oriented programming. And then it uses uh, Symfony. And uh, we're going to uh, discuss the clear, how to clear classes. And then namespaces, identifying white spaces, and naming convention, visibility, type hinting, and chaining. So there's a lot of... Uh, New in Drupal, Drupal 8, so I'm just uh, pick some of the uh, topics that I'm going to discuss uh, later. So, yeah, uh, object-oriented programming. So, as you know that uh, Drupal 8 is already object-oriented pro programming. It also uses an M MVC pattern, so a model view controller. So, uh, Drupal 8 uh, most is now... Uh, Objects and classes. Uh, There's a, a buzzword on the Drupal 8. And yeah, it's not like a, a Drupal 74 that's more on procedural programming language. So with Drupal 8, it's uh, more on focus on objected, object oriented programming. So more on objects and classes. So yeah, Drupal 8 also uses Symfony. So uh, Symfony is a set of uh, decoupled and reusable components on which the best PHP ap applications are built, such as Drupal, PHP, VBB, Easy Publish, and also uh, I know Laravel also uses Symfony. So declaring classes. Uh, best practice is include having one class or interface or trait per file. So it means that uh, when creating a class, uh, uh, best practice is just to include uh, one class. So that file should name for the class such that the file name or for example is full interface would be full, ter full interface. So if you change that, if there's a different for, for the file name and the class name, that would not work. So yeah, it's a b best uh, practice to name the file file name as same as the the class name so this is a uh, new on Drupal 8 it's uh, auto load uh, classes so it use uh, 
keyword used, so I'm going to show it later. So this is an example of a wrong uh, declare of class. So uh, here in this example, uh, I add uh, example block, so I add S. So in Drupal way, it should be same as the file name and the same as the class name. So uh, uh, I forget to include that also that if you're declaring a class, it's a best practice to include only one class. So for example, uh, if you include the two class, uh, that's not advisable. So here's the example of namespace. So in namespace, uh, we we like to create and some alias on the folder. So for example, uh, Drupal slash example slash uh, plugin slash block. The example is the module, and then the plugin is another subdirectory, and the block is also a a folder. So uh, we auto load the class block base. So block base is a core in Drupal 8. It's a core class that uh, you can extend for you to be able to use uh, the, the methods of that class. So uh, this, uh, in this uh, example, so in uh, best practice, in coding standard is uh, we always put uh, a line break or a, li a next line before the the method or for example it's uh, it used to to make the code more readable so leave an empty line between start of class interface definition and property method definition and next is yeah same here so we just uh, leave a uh, space. We add the new line. So this is the uh, same as also as in Drupal 7. So you see that uh, there's some of uh, uh, coding standards that are still applicable on Drupal, Drupal 8. So for example, between uh, leave an empty line between an end of property definition and start method. So see the new line then there's, uh, okay. So naming convention. Classes and interface should use upper camel naming. Uh, it means that uh, the first letter should be uh, capital then the next word should be also capital so as the upper camel you see that the first letter is uh, capital u and then the the second word has a uh, capital c then uh, methods and class properties should use lower camel naming in drupal 8 properties of configuration entities are except of this convention those properties are allowed to use underscores so for example you for example is uh you have a uh, variable or methods that uh for example uh get name so the first uh letter of of that method is uh small g then the second word is the uh, capital n so get name something like that So if an acronym is used in class or method name, make it camel case too. So uh, for example, uh, let's give an example. So for example, this one. So in this example, uh, the on the right side, uh, it shows that uh, class examples extend black base. So as you notice, the first letter of the word is uh, in a small capital. It's in a small. Uh, small case so that's wrong so the correct way to the de to declare a class is uh, this one in Drupal way uh, we capital the first word and the second word is uh, also capital so visibility 
Omelets and properties of classes must specify their visibility, public, protected, or private. So, uh, it is a PHP force style. Var declaration must not be uh, used. So, uh, it means that uh, for public means that the variable function uh, scope availability anywhere in a, on a class. So, uh, that, um, that public uh, visibility must be avoided. Then, on private, uh, it means that the variable function scope only available on the class only. So, it means that uh, the private uh, methods or properties are not available on other class. And then, uh, protected. Uh, this one means that the variable function scope visible in all classes that extend uh, current class including the parent class. So, for example, uh, you have uh, variables or functions that's visible in class and then you extend that class and then you can still use the, the variable function on that extended class. So it's like uh, you inherit the property or the variable function. Do you have any questions? So yeah, please let, uh, let me know if I... Uh, if I talk fast. So here's these uh, examples. Uh, the wrong one is, uh, uh, it says that uh, avoid to use the var. So instead use the public, protected, or private. But uh, it, it will depend on your use case. Uh, on when you're going to use that uh, visibility or it's like an access modifier or something so yeah type hinting so uh, PHP supports optional type specification uh, for function and method parameters for classes and arrays all the code type hinting so it does make type required as passing an object that does not conform to the type will result in fatal error so, uh, it is a uh, practice to uh, specify the, the interface instead of the, of the class. So, it's uh, more easy for us to debug where the error is coming from. Because if you use the, the class instead of the interface, uh, it, will, uh, it will be uh, more hard for us to find where the errors come from comes from so it's uh, not easy to track down so this is an example of type hinting so as you can see the how it uh, how it uh, calls or implements the function on the on the parameter you see that the Garfield the cat and a variable dog so the Garfield the cat is the class and then the, on the Drupal way so the cat can is interface large side dog it's that that's the interface so in parameter it, uh, it's good practice to uh, to use interface instead of class so uh, it's more more uh, easy for for us to debug if there's an error on your code So chaining, I also saw this uh, on Drupal 7, so yeah, I think it's in Drupal 8, it's, it's also still used. So PHP allows objects returned from functions and methods to be chained be called immediately. This is known as fluent interface. So in unchained version, you, you'll see that uh, MySQL uh, query screen. So as you notice that the the, the table is uh, enclosed on a uh, braces, and then you could uh, also pass a parameter. That's the node ID, and then you could also uh, uh, declare it on a, or set it on a variable, then call the fetch field function or object. The results. Uh, value if you uh, dump that is uh, it's uh, it will return 
as a array object. Then in chained version, as you notice, it's a one-line code. So it is just as almost the same, but uh, it, in this uh, code, you didn't uh, create a new variable and then uh, call it. So it's a uh, chain. So DV query is a function, then followed by the other function fetch field. So as a general rule, a method should return this and thus be chainable in any case where there is no other logical return value. Common example are those methods that seem set some state or property on the object. It is better in the, those cases to return this rather than true, false, or null. So for example, uh, instead, uh, instead of uh, return a true value, uh, return uh, this, so dollar sign this. So, in the case where you have a fluid, inter fluid interface for class, the, the code spans more than one line. The method calls should be indented with two spaces. So, I have this uh, example of fluid interface. So, you see that uh, dbselect and the other function condition and then execute. So uh, we're going to discuss about the Drupal 8 file structure. So here's the new Drupal 8 structure. Core modules are moved inside core modules while contributed and custom module can be placed inside the root module directory. So as you notice that uh, inside the core modules, uh, miscellaneous folder profiles or other uh, or uh, core modules are moved in the core while the modules are uh, taken out on the root project so you could place there your contributed and uh, custom modules so you still you could still also place uh, your custom or contributed modules inside the sites all modules but in practice uh, you should place your contrib and uh, custom modules inside the modules in root project directory. So one th uh, one new things that uh, also added there is the vendor vendor directory that uh, includes some components from Symfony. So uh, in some cases, uh, I don't know if uh, if someone of you also encounter some. Uh, some issue with the, for example, you updated some modules and you're not using a composer before, and then you, you try to create a composer. When you apply that uh, on that uh, composer workflow or uh, create a, a use composer, we'll some sometimes you encounter some merge conflict. So if you're going to create a project, if you're going if you're going to uh, to stick using Composer, uh, I suggest stick on using Composer. Composer all the way because uh, if you if you use uh, manual installation or download the folder and then drop it on the modules folder, in the next time you use Composer, so it will uh, give a conflict on your development. So uh, we are uh, pushed to use the uh, Composer, so we're not going to uh, more use on Drash. So in Drupal 8, we are forced to use Composer. So Drupal 8 uh, APR overview. So I just include some of the most uh, used API in Drupal 8. So some of the API there is, uh, you're going to be uh, familiar familiarized because uh, you are also using it on Drupal 7 before so configuration API so the configuration API provides a central space for modules to store configuration data this data can be simple configuration like your site name or more complex information managed with your 
with configuration entities such as views and content content types. So, uh, is anyone here familiar with the system configuration when you return a form? So. It is like a counterpart of it in Drupal, Drupal 8. So actually, there's a two types of configuration API. The one is configuration API, and the other one is, uh, is the configuration entities API. So it uses uh, content types or entities. So yeah. The key difference is that uh, config API is a singleton use case. A singleton is where there can be only a single instance of this configuration. A good example would be will be the site name. Then while the configuration entity API should be used to store multiple sets of configurations. So for example, is node types, views, vocabularies, and fields. Uh, those are uh, default in uh, Drupal 8. As well in Drupal 7. So why use configuration API? So configuration is a place to store information that you would want to synchronize from development to production. So this information is often created during site building and is not typically generated by regular users during normal site operation. Uh, do you have any questions? So next is the black API. So blocks in the Drupal 8 is made up of two separate API structures. These two APIs are black plugin API, which is standalone reusable API, and then black entity API, which is Drupal 8 specific use case of block placement and visibility control. So is, is anyone here familiar with the bin module? Yeah, it's uh it's also an entity block. So in Drupal 8, uh, it's uh, already in the core. So you have an uh, option to create uh, uh, something similar like a bin, bin block. So you could also add more fields there. So actually, uh, in Drupal 8, you, you don't need almost uh, to, code, uh, to code more. But all you need is already on a Drupal 8, but sometimes if you have some uh, some cases or use case that you need to, ha to have a more complex module, so that's the time that you need to create your own custom module. So if you're, uh, if you're a Drupal 7 developer before and then you jump on Drupal 8, so it's a kind of a big, uh, big another learning curve that uh, you need to learn object-oriented programming and then MVC and last object, some of the, the new words for the Drupal 8. Now back, back on the block API, so just an example. So can you see the code? So here uh, I created a class, then I extend the block-based uh, Drupal core class. Then I use the namespace keyword to include the the plugin blocks. So that the plugin blocks that I use is the that's the custom class that uh, I created. So use namespace to avoid a uh, code collision. So for example, you have a uh, two. Uh, two plugins that uh, use that same class. So you could uh, segregate the, uh, you could use the same class, but you need to have a different, uh, for example, the subdirectory name. So from here, what uh, I did is uh, I call the function build. So the build uh, method is come from a block base. So you could uh, use the the method that comes from block base when I extend it. Then I call the Drupal current user. So if you are familiar with the user load, 
something like that. So, you can uh, if you are Drupal Seven developer and uh, and uh, you see this uh, line of code, so you can uh, uh, find it uh, weird and yeah. So here you could see that uh, you call that the backslash Drupal, and then uh, to colon, then you call the the method. That's how you call the the method. So it's also chain chain method. So as you see, you could see that uh, there's a get display name. So if you're going to just load the this uh, this part. And then if you dump the name, you could uh, you could see a bunch of uh, results there. So it will return uh, a lot of uh, information. So in this, uh, it just uh, returned the, the name of the current user. And then, yeah. And then return the markup. So here's a, another new, uh, new keyword in, in Drupal 8. You will notice uh, the lot of dollar sign this, and then followed by the t function. So it is used to also to translate, and then you could also add the parameter and the placeholder, or oh, just like just like the same in the Drupal seven. So it's also written on a Drupal Drupal eight. And then uh, in the block, you'll see the hello admin. The, the username is the admin. So form API. In Drupal 7, you also use the form API. Uh, if you have some custom form. And if you don't want to use a web form or the default form in Drupal. So you could also build your own form in Drupal 8 so uh, it's uh, it's uh, in the uh, different in Drupal Drupal 8 in uh, creating a form so you need to to uh, implement or call the class uh, form interface so that uh, class name holds some of the methods that uh, you need in building form so some of the methods that uh, you need uh, you can get on that uh, interface the build form and the validate form and submit form so in drupal drupal 74 we use the uh, we use a uh, lot hooks a lot so in drupal 8 uh, we're using uh, more on class and its uh, methods so the submit forms uh, returns uh, some when you click uh, when you call the submit forms uh, it will uh, generate array that comes from uh, that comes from the form build form so yeah it's a when a form is requested it's defined as a renderable array often referred to as a form api array or simply form so just like the same as uh, drupal 7 it returns a array of form uh, so for example for this one I think it's uh, just too small. So, for example, in the build form, as you notice, uh, it's almost the same uh, the same format on how you uh, declare an array of fields. But you will notice in Drupal eight, uh, instead of the parentheses. You will notice that uh, it's uh, it's become a square square bracket. So I wish I could assume uh, that image. Later, I will show you that how it looks like looks that the class. So you could see it in more detail. So here, you have a field first name and then last name and then you save configuration. So just like the same in Drupal 7 but uh, different on how you code it on Drupal 8. 
then routes and controller does anyone uh, try to, uh, cre to create or have been used the routes and controller before so yeah so this is uh, the new the, the new way on how you could create your own uh, menu so in before in Drupal 7 we have this hook menu and then we, ha we define there the the URL the name of the menu here in the routes and control and in Drupal Drupal 8 it's a uh, more different so you have here the routing that YAML file so you define there the permission access permission of the of the menu of the URL so I will show you that later so here you could uh, have the request post and get and then it handles by HTTP kernel so HTTP kernel is comes from the on a symphony and then it will uh, it will return a response JSON and then you will get that uh, you will get the response from the controller so the data will comes from the controller the controller gener generates the the response So that's uh, responsible on generating the content of the of the data. So creating your first mod custom module. So uh, as you noticed, uh, there's a new extension on the that info file. Before it, in Drupal seven, we only use the example that info in Drupal 8 uh, we, we we're now using uh, that YAML file so uh, that, that YAML files not only uh, shows in modules it also visible on uh, on teams so you'll see a lot of that YAML file in teams also so in declaring a name so it's a uh, key and value fair so just like the same as you're declaring in Drupal 7 so you have the name and then you the, the the name of your module so here in the example is example module then the type of module and then the description of the module or, or what uh, your module does and then you, you have to also declare what core that your module is using and then the package so in this example, I use custom. So all modules that has a package custom, uh, if you search it on admin modules, you will see that all that modules uh, comes from the package custom. So here, uh, in in creating a Drupal 8 module, what you only need is the, that that info that YAML file. So. You define the information of your modules and then uh, it will instantly shows up on your admin modules page then create exam uh, example black class so this is the the one that uh, I show you earlier so here's the new structure of uh, of declaring a uh, block so you have some uh, nested directory so src plugin block and then your file uh, example block that's that's uh, your class name also so that's uh, one thing new on Drupal 8 plugins so it's uh, more organized on the uh, on uh, declaring your your plugins or your modules than before. Excuse me. Is plugin only particular to block? Uh, actually, uh, you, you could uh, have uh, more plugins, not just only the block. You could also have so widgets, field widgets, something, uh, for example, before uh, you declare different uh, way on Drupal 7 on creating widgets. So, Plugins uh, like blocks, field widgets are are uh, types of plugins. So, okay, so yeah. 
and next. So uh, you could see that uh, instantly once you declare your black, so it will show on the place black. Uh, it will show on your structure blocks. So you could here you could also add your entity block. So instead of your custom, so in my example, you will see your custom block shows up. So once place, uh, it will show up on a. Uh, on your home page where you set your block so for example in sidebar so it will show up there so here is creating a custom form you need to auto load the class config form base and then form state interface so that's the class that uh, that you need when you're going to create a custom form so for you to be able to use some of the methods of that class. So from here, we extend the config form base. So what we need in creating a custom form is the get editable config names, and then get form ID, then build form, then submit form. So here in implementing get editable config names, so we get the configuration name, then that stores the config form settings. If you're familiar, familiar with the variables tables, so you will find it similar to that uh, in Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. So it's, uh, it's similar to system uh, config, return system config method. So implement get form ID. So here you will need to to create or return the unique form ID. So in my example, I return contact form. So this must be unique. So yeah. So in build form, here you will declare your uh, array field. So you will see here the we initialize the config this config that holds the the settings of your form so it holds the vari variables similar to var variables table so you you will uh we call the config uh our sign get so that pulls the default value of the of the field if you don't have a value set there it will just uh, show us empty or you could also set a placeholder. Then you return the build form. So here you call the parent and then the method uh, build form. And then uh, you need to also uh, create the function submit form. Uh, in this uh, function, uh, you call and set the value of the of the form field. So, for example, uh, here uh, we pull the value of form state object, and then we call the get value, and then we call the first name. That's the that's also uh, stored in the admin settings. So basically, uh. If you're familiar familiar with the variable underscore get and the variable underscore set, so this is the equivalent in Drupal eight. And then you call you change it on the save save method. Yeah, I think uh, that's it. Uh, I should uh, also. Uh, include the database uh, but uh, I don't have time to, to include it so yeah I would love to include it but uh, it's a uh, quite busy last last week so I think uh, I'll share it next time probably or uh, I'll uh, I'll push it on uh, my github account and then I'll share it on our, our Facebook group sometime uh, later so, yes, do you have uh, any questions about uh, creating Drupal 8 custom modules? 
I know it's uh, for the uh, new uh, for the new in Drupal 8. It's uh, quite difficult to to grasp the how Drupal 8 uh, uh, how you create a Drupal 8 custom modules because uh, you need to learn OOP object oriented programming. You need to know the class how uh, how it works uh, and then object and then routing and controller and then there's also uh, factory patterns that uh, I also uh, uh, read when while uh, creating that slide so yeah it's a quite uh, a long uh, long journey in learning Drupal 8 so yeah I think uh, I'm still learning on Drupal 8 a lot. <laughs> we have any questions? I think uh, we're good now. So thank you for listening. Uh, just a little reminder. So we'll have lunch now. Just before lunch, we'll take the group picture just behind you.